Nice. Mario? Can, can you say that you played Super Mario on the first ukulele ever? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> Dude, this is crazy. That is cool, yeah. So, uh, Shauna saying, um, so this is what known as like, it's it's what we know as uh you know as as far as what we can confirm and what we can't confirm yeah but but basically this is this is acknowledged and considered the first um ukulele and you know nobody can say with with definitive proof but um amongst you know the the people who are familiar with the history and um this was actually on display at the um at the uh what is it the it still has a sticker so the academy of arts mm-hmm. as uh, the first ukulele uh, one of the telltale signs is it's um has a core neck mm-hmm. so uh, you know they wouldn't have had core in in uh what is it uh madera madera yeah it's <laughs> so but this is so cool it is um so brazilian rosewood sides and back and then looks like a spruce top there um pretty cool thing is they have um they have this little mm-hmm. you know decorative thingy which again like doing this with hand tools yeah i thought and dude so you know the thing is like i i stress this a lot and a lot of people you know might think well you know, okay, what's, it's not that big of a deal like i've done stuff by hand with chisels and okay so here's the thing though people didn't have electricity right they didn't have flushing toilets they didn't have refrigerate like this is in a time when people lived slightly better and more sophisticated than cavemen <laughs> Like you, <laughs> they didn't have sewing machines. You sewed your clothes. You went to a tailor, right? Yeah. You went. People, there was, uh, like, the the. So what boggles my mind is like, but they had so many like parallels with like our modern convenient lives at the time. Mm-hmm. But I mean, people, you know, this is this is before like, the average home had all of the things that makes our lives easy and convenient, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it's just, um. Like only rich families had like photos at the time because mm-hmm. like a photo was like shooting a movie now, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, it's mm-hmm. just crazy that like all of this detail, you know, and, and it's, it's consistent across, you know, so this is relatively simpler than some of the other ukulele we've seen, but it's still got the rope binding, has mm-hmm. a rosette, has the pinstripes all mm-hmm. done out of wood here on the bottom. Crazy. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to call this Adam. <laughs> Unless... <laughs> Unless you're a very anti-religious person, then we'll call this Lucy, your first <laughs> hominid. Yeah, because um, at first I, that kind of threw me off. Right? I was asking Sean, I thought it was a Nunes because that was apparently that, his yeah, signature. Like a thing, right? Yeah, yeah. but uh, apparently not. You know, there's a slight difference in design and Santo. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm holding this, you know, and today has been a day about learning, um, you know, about the three, you know, the builders, right? And and I just, it's just fascinating story, right? And uh, I think about, because what, Nunes is the one that He's made the, the longest, right? The famous Swiss. Right? Like, he yeah, was the, the most well-known and longest and running. So you can yeah. say that he was the businessman. Yeah. Right? And, and then Sean was also telling us the hardest to find was Diaz. Because of what? All the fires. Yeah. Right? <laughs> All of them were in Chinatown, right? All of them were in Chinatown. But one guy suffered how many how many fires? Two? Twice, I think. Two, three, yeah. right? And just destroyed everything, right? Mm-hmm. You know, that kind of sucks, right? And then at one point, Santo and Diaz were sharing shop. They were homies. Inside. They were homies, yeah, right? That's what, that's what I'm picturing. Yeah, they were homies. Yeah, they were homies. They're, 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 yeah, they're probably boys, talking yeah. about Nunes on the side. Like, yeah, like, like, <laughs> Nunes. <yeah. laughs> he, good. he don't know. <laughs> yeah, but again, Santo apparently it was a he had he had history right or something like that he was kind of he had his run of trouble maybe or something like that but that didn't mean he didn't build beautiful instruments you know what i mean like he he had a he definitely had a skill set and and this was definitely it you know and my goodness um just the stories you know of the three and how they possibly interacted each other helped each other out many times i think you know i would like you could kind of assume then, right? Yeah. Um, even you, you back when you still used to call, you used to call like Chris, yeah, was it Chris or Casey? Never, <laughs> never, yeah, yeah of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. The Kamakas, 
and that that family has has helped us out and mm -hmm. um like i talked started with joe from kanilea and mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. it's um it's funny because like yeah we're we're obviously competition you know mm -hmm. but it's it's there's there's no contempt there's no it's it's bring your best efforts and your best game forward you mm -hmm, know and there's mm -hmm. there's no ill will um you know i mean at times would there be a sense of rivalry yeah sure of course but mm -hmm. you know it's not like nothing bad nothing negative you know mm -hmm. in a good way and i mean you know and, and anytime um if i can help them out with something you know and then obviously you know i will because i i think the the mindset in 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 hawaii you know and right. it's, it's funny like you know we talk about what's different and we talk about what's the same you know and um you know while while these guys came from a, a different place a different culture in portugal you know they came from an island like another island in in the ocean and in a different ocean you know but i think you know not to say that this culture is exclusive to islanders but i think generally small communities where family and 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 community relationships are are strong you know you look at um you know, not so much the big cities in in say like on the west and the east coast but as you get more towards like rural america mm -hmm. you know you see like that old school like 1950s america from like the movies where like you know your neighbors you know you're, you know the person at the general store and you know i think a lot of that hasn't changed in in areas outside of like you know very very modernized metro like gentrified areas you know and um yeah, I I I think they all definitely had close ties because he. I would say I would say pretty close yeah. actually. I know that's what, that would be my guess, right? Because they were the outsiders. Maybe they were like right? the. They were the, they were the ones that was, I mean they you know, just like kind of like Japan, like the Japanese out here, right? They, we tend to click together, right? Because familiarity, you yeah. know, everyone there would welcome and everything like that. But, uh, I I figure it's the same thing, you know, with, with these guys, you know, here they are trying to make it came coming from the sugar sugar cane or the plant the plantation right yeah and starting their business and and who are they right yeah, yeah like just three foreigners in hawaii you know trying to trying to make it yeah you know so i would figure i think they're a little bit more homies than we think i think so i don't know I you so. know i mean maybe i'm wrong you know but it would be nice to kind of think that way yeah you know and yeah, it's just that one's the that one's the deluxe model though. Yeah, that one's yeah. the that one's the the mega. That's the. I mean, like we don't want to do it. <laughs> wh whoever you know, whoever it was at that point in history must have had some had some bucks. Yeah, like, right. I wonder. They were not much... the. This is not the uh, plantation worker. This is the plantation owner purchased <laughs> this instrument. <laughs> I wonder how much this would really. You you figure. Like we're so you know for us koaloha we're so blessed that people you know, our instruments are expensive you know yeah. what i mean and uh people buy them and i just wonder Wait, I I mean, maybe sean knows yeah. the answer like how much did this sell for like, i don't know <laughs> you know like what would it be like well this is like a hundred years ago so at least dollar right because right, <laughs> back in the day you used to you were, like i heard of kamaka selling for like 10 bucks or something like that right and like i don't know yeah. right so you would figure right this yeah. with all no, of I, this with I, all of this i think i think i mean to scale i would I, I would say this is in the range of like a seven to ten thousand dollar modern custom mm. you know that so again like what what was seven to ten thousand dollars back then like dollar dollar fifty i don't know you know because mm -hmm. that like this is when a penny was like worth something yeah, right, you know? right, 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 right. a penny was like a you, dollar you would get change and, for a penny. yeah like <laughs> yeah, they had the, the yeah it was like yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah amazing man uh, I, like today has been quite a learning experience for myself really um, did you want to play mario on this one i actually i do want to touch okay, it i mean this I is play, this play. is my first ukulele I wanna play Star Wars. <laughs> so this is argued like is was what's argued is that this that what the, is the transition right it's either was it a, a machete or ukulele it all depends on what was it tuned to when it was first made yeah right, right? that's what it all boils down to and I'm just gonna say it was tuned to GCA. No, that, uh, I'm, I can say it with confidence. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I so because I, I just know. I said so. so there's really no more doubt yeah, anymore. No, this is confirmed, actually confirmed. Confirmed. The first ukulele because we Brian and Paul said. From yeah. Paul, so rest assured, so this so is good. an ukulele. Just stamp it. Stamp it. Notarize it. All good. All good. Good to go. <laughs> Beautiful.
harmonics on those. Not that. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful. This thing is cracks all over too, but restored and still still sounds a banger. Mm. It's still a banger. Beautiful you work. Know, yeah. You know what I thought this was at first? I thought pick guard. Um, yeah, I thought it was like a super crazy pick guard <laughs> until I realized, oh no, that's just that's a dip. Yeah, it's been you know, and that's that's the cool thing is like this has been this played. has been played, and mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. for for me and for you, you know, as builders, I think that's what we want, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We don't want to just build something and it it sits on a shelf and you know looks pretty and. I mean, and if it if it means something to them, if it's hanging and displayed, then yeah, of yeah, course, absolutely, right? But, absolutely, but yeah. but yeah, you as instrument builders, we want people to build. I mean to play our instruments you know so very cool thank you what an experience yeah so pretty cool we got to come here and check out these uh vintage ukulele um vintage antique Antique. Antique, yeah, antique. Yeah. I don't know. Vintage, antique. I don't know. Mm -hmm. They're old. They're old ukulele. <laughs> Very old. But I think I have the older one, right? Yeah. By 10 years. Yeah. So it's pretty, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's small kind nerve wracking, you know, holding like literal holding history in your hands. There's no warranty. There is no warranty because <laughs> they gone and they don't care. <laughs> but um, you know, the first thing that caught me was for a time when they didn't have like all of our modern, you know, we have routers, we have uh, lasers, we have CNC machines now, we have, you know, even like something as simple as a chisel, right? You yeah. can go, you buy one, you know, and, and there's a big market for like, you know, antique and, you know, these antique hand tools now and it's, it's there's kind of like this movement for that. But, you know, the, the reality is you need to get a job done. I mean, we just, we go out and we, we purchase a tool, right? You know, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. we even wood, right? We, we go to, um, you know, not so much woods like koa and, and, and certain things that we use, but you know, for the most part, you want to build a shed at your house. You go to the store, you buy wood, you build your shed. They have all the screws they have, you know, so what, I guess the first thing that, that I noticed was with these, you know, old, these antique ukulele is the level of detail and the accuracy in the woodworking is really not much different from a modern build. Mm -hmm. And um, their tools are like sticks and stones, man. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing this in like Finstone stuff. Sharp sticks and yeah, sharp stones. You know, but it's it's crazy. It's incredible. And and they're, for the most part, they're in tune. You know, mm -hmm. they're, um, one, one thing I noticed was really cool is if you look, yours too, they didn't make, fret wire at the time so these are actually little pieces of like thin gauge metal that they're using like a fret so they jam it inside but if you look so the, and then the tops are just round i'm, I'm assuming by hand they're by, actually not consistent depth yeah right yeah. but it's like the, the the frets are you know they didn't have frets at the time right so what mm -hmm. do you do you you make your own frets out of out of metal so that was that was pretty cool um but yeah it's like it's crazy like rope binding um Rope binding is a pain in the butt to make with modern tools, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just crazy. And they sound honestly. That's actually that's what I'm most impressed with. You know, um, you know, coming here, I definitely had my own ideas of like a vintage ukulele, antique, just old ukulele, you know, and. And my exposure to like vintage stuff has been mainly like, you know, the Martins and even the old Kamakas and stuff like that. You know, I've never really experienced this. You know, we're talking 1895, this one, right? And we're not. Kolaho is 1995. 1995. 1890 <laughs> Yeah, you know, and um, the. This. You know, the sound, you know, um, just, you know, I wasn't thinking precision. I wasn't thinking resonance. Like you knew it would make a sound, yeah, right? Like, yeah. like, oh, that's, you know, expecting like, oh, okay, it's cool. It's a, it's a ukulele, mm -hmm. you know. It'll... And it sounds like an ukulele, yeah. you know, and playability, you know, it's just, it's all there. It's all there, 
you know, and what I really noticed too in the construction, you know, is that kind of like how we approach our instruments too, right? Mm. Um, the body cavity, right? The less you have on the inside, the bigger yeah. sound you'll produce, and and just how do you how do you make a small instrument resonate? You know, is you know definitely not by suffocating it, you know, with yeah. all kinds of things. And I'm looking on the inside. And first of all, you pick it up and it's just so lightweight. That's the thing. Yeah. So the thing that, that caught me right off the bat was like, they're all light. They're all like, none of them feel like, even with like, you know, this one, the, the neck is a little thicker, the, the head stock is a little thicker, right? But like, and then the other thing is for the most part, you know, I don't do this with like a piece of history, but they're, they're like pretty well balanced. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and if you look at like almost right there in the middle, like it'll, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool, yeah. And, yeah, you know, just... Should the it? customizing, you know, like... You know, just you never figure that they... You know, it's it's all a custom job, but, yeah, I mean, you look at... You, you look at the stuff, like... The stuff that's on here now, you can only order it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like... Like through us, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not gonna come with it. You yeah. know, you can try order it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Will you get it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but just again, with that said, with what you mentioned earlier, with no tools. I mean, look at. I almost didn't notice it because I'm just looking at the rope binding, but that pin strip that you know. Yep. You know that just. Yep. Yep. So what? We got good old laser machine to do that for us right now. <laughs> so what? What's funny is like. I think I thought about doing rope binding once and then I got halfway through and I didn't because I I prematurely just the amount of work for for what I would charge or want to charge and for what a person would want be willing to pay for like rope binding mm -hmm. you know it's 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 one of those inequitable things right like say we do like this crazy inlay right but all this shell and diamonds and whatever right people are willing to pay because it's like it's got that bling you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but for rope binding it's it's great you know it's subtle it's it's earthy it's it's not a boom in your face thing like shell you know it flows but yeah you know and it, it adds a lot but it's so much work um you know so in addition but a lot of people don't realize with these these older you know items, be it an ukulele, be it a, a shelf, be it a house, be it you know whatever it is, is um, not only did they have to make all of their stuff because they didn't have luthier supplies at the time, right? So these guys are not only building their instruments, but they're also building. So in in many cases, they're actually building their own specialized tools to make the stuff to make the ukulele <laughs> and then again you know you look at the the precision and like the joinery you know it's it's not as clean as like a modern build but sure. we have I mean, but you know you look at i mean generally things line up and and i mean you can tell it's handcrafted but still when you look the overall symmetry the i mean the fit and finish is is not very far from like a high quality modern instrument and i think that's kind of one of the things that you know, no matter whether it's now a hundred years in the future, a hundred years in the past, I mean, quality will always be quality, mm -hmm. you know, and and it, it's just funny to see that parallel of, you know, these were the guys that were known for producing high quality instruments at the time, right? You know, and, um, you know, things caught on and people started selling what they're also calling the ukulele, you know, but really it's it's cheap knockoffs, right? And mm -hmm. and it's, it's funny because the exact same thing happens today, right? We have these high quality builders right not just limited to here in hawaii but you know on the mainland in, in japan and foreign countries but um a lot of our effort is undermined because people's you know it's it's like literally a ten dollar toy like piece of crap ukulele that you buy at like a souvenir store and and people's first experience with what an ukulele is is oh it's just you know ten dollar mm -hmm. piece of crap it's made out of plastic it's it's out of tune it sounds horrible it's hard right. to play right like why why is this even a thing like is this right. really an instrument right and it's just it's 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 funny that these these parallels you know and and while so much has changed like it's kind of the same <laughs> yeah kind of just yeah kind of like with that right so yeah. much has 
change, but still the same. I think Sean, I don't think it was these two pieces, but Sean showed us one earlier. Uh, I was looking at it, right? And it had the cracks. It, it's, yeah. not, it's, not, it's not like cracks from <laughs> dropping and stuff, but it's cracks from the building process. Yeah. yeah. You know? And um, how they try to hide it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But not really hide it. Yeah. <laughs> and also on the inside, you know, when I noticed those liners too. All, you know, cra- yeah. all the cracks, you know, yeah. the precise location of the cracks, you know, it's just how they dealt with heat. Yeah. You know, the, you know, like soaking of the wood and just steam, you know, how it, they, they dealt. We're dealing with the same problems. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not they dealt with the same problems. Yeah. We dealt with, we're dealing with the same problems, you know, and we sometimes let those same problems still circulate. <laughs> like we didn't see, we didn't see that, scra- that crack right there. We're yeah. just going to send it out. I'm just, you know, but it was just kind of funny to see that, you know, and, um, on an, a historical piece and that I know the craftsmanship is all there but also the you know the mistakes yeah you know um, it was just kind of funny because we we stress about those kind of things now yeah. you know and figure out ways to kind of overcome it and stuff like that and it's the same same with these guys you know um, and it's just amazing you know quality it's just this is so lightweight so tiny you know yeah, also again no fretboard right and it's just it's an ukulele you yeah. know again totally different from what i imagined it's, and it's like if you close your eyes you wouldn't know this thing was built like 130 40 yeah. years ago right yeah yeah you know it's it's it is totally an ukulele a very well made a very old beautiful ukulele i mean even just the finishing right there was that one rosewood blood the brazilian rosewood piece that i actually thought it was refinished right but just yeah just the sheen on it you know it's just over over a hundred years and it's just it's still protecting it. It's still there. I mean, it's, you know, it's still got cracks here and there. But look at it. I mean, my goodness, this is a beautiful. Did you just crack it? I know. No, no, I did not. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beautiful pieces. Oh, and the gut strings. These are a trip. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Different. Very. It's a. Uh, I was actually not what I was expecting. No. They're they're. They they play and they sound it. They're um, I like the tension. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's I don't know. They're they're neat. I've never. I don't think I've ever played like actual gut. gut I don't strings. think we talk about this enough either. Oh, the pegs. Yeah. That's, they carve that out. Yeah. They. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And, and they match the taper by. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, basically they they, they fit it. And yeah. If it doesn't fit. And if you make it too small, then they you, just make, gotta, you make another one. They're going to make another ukulele <laughs> that would fit that one peg, yeah? yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool, man. What was, that, what was the whole thing you were talking about, too? Uh, they're like having a fretboard versus no fretboard and what it kind of, what, like, not using a fretboard limits you to. Oh, so, it. yeah, so. I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, so I think, so what's pretty cool is. You know, in addition to just like some of the parallels as far as like quality and I think even marketing, right? Because you look at why 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 do more work and add more things that you cannot charge for the amount, you know, in an equal or an equitable amount of labor, additional labor and you can't charge that, right? Like why why do it? It's it's marketing and it's the same thing, right? Where you know, they, they didn't have the internet but the, the economy was far more global or connected than, than a lot of people realize. It's just, it wasn't, I think, on the consumer level, you know, where, like, you can order something directly from China, directly from Japan mm-hmm. now, right? And it's just, it's it's literally like a click. It's on your, right. it's in your pocket most of the time. Yeah, you have yeah. access to the entire world, you know? But they, they had the same marketing, right? Because you have, let's say you have three to five guys making the same thing. Like, what? Well, what makes your thing different? Why should I buy yours, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, part of marketing is business, right? It's it's a part of business. And, you know, it's why do more work when you don't have to? And right. it's, it's kind of interesting when you look at, like, so this one... Work smarter, the, not harder. Exactly. So the yeah. Nunes has no 
uh, fretboard, right, or fingerboard, whereas this one does. Mm -hmm. um, this is an older one, and this came from a time when I think they were building and following all of the tradition, you know, or as much of it as possible, like 100%, right? That this is where we came from. This is how we build these instruments. And um, it comes to Hawaii and they're like, hey, wait a minute. If nobody knows what this thing is. Hey, they don't know if, it, should it have a fingerboard? They don't know <laughs> that, right? And if it works, it works, you mm -hmm. know? But one of the things is, I think what's interesting is, so my, my take on it is, <laughs> You can do away with the fingerboard, but when you when you do away with the fingerboard, what happens is your scale length and the size of your body becomes very limited because your scale length is set and it's stuck to the right, neck, right? Yeah. So your bridge has to go here. Your bridge has to go exactly here. So as far as like how you build the body, the, the proportions of it, where you want the bridge to set, in a sense, you're, you're building everything around the neck. The neck mm -hmm. Yeah, and the body, everything, you're bracing. So everything is already predetermined right mm -hmm. so you know well this was definitely definitely save us some time from a manufacturing standpoint um i think they needed to keep pushing the envelope right and kept you know well crap now there's like two more companies that are doing the same thing right so how do we make it different oh why don't we make the body bigger mm -hmm. or let's increase the scale length mm -hmm. or what if we mm -hmm. move the bridge so that it's not directly in the center let's push it a little over the center what does that do to the sound right so i, I think a lot of these things were, were driven by by necessity and by by natural dynamics of 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 really again like nothing's really changed that much you know like you look at bridge design um that one's got the pins right yeah. so bridge pins it's a very old traditional way of, of setting strings um this one has uh like a knotted tie bar which mm -hmm. is like we we, well, we used to yeah. we did yeah which we did mm -hmm. you know and now we have a a, a semi-classical style tie right, bar right? right but um you know it, it took us what 20 years to arrive on a version of a bridge that we felt was aesthetic mm -hmm. served its purpose sounded good you know was was easy for the um the end consumer mm -hmm. and was also something we could call our own mm -hmm. you know so oh man so it's kind of like yeah so from this they and how we become more efficient we nix this we change this and they're like and crap, then and crap, then let's bring it back yeah no now we gotta make <laughs> to right to offer what more of more more of, more offerings yeah right more yeah. offerings right yeah. and you cannot do that without the fretboard yeah yeah it makes sense yeah that's pretty cool man i never I never thought about that, and I always just thought, "Hey, that looks kind of weird. Where's where's the fretboard? <laughs> you know, he's lazy. <laughs> Who's being lazy here?" <laughs> but but it makes sense, you know, like because back in the day, less tools, less thing, you know, materials might have been an issue as well. And yeah, just you gotta roll with the times, and yeah, and just be as efficient as efficient as possible, and yeah, you know, like. And like what we were talking about earlier, right? Like it's an art, but at the end of the day, it's also a business. Yep. Right. And yep. just to see how the the minds of the early builders, like Santo, Diaz, Nunes, you know how. Oh, you gotta. How the, with not only the instruments changed, but business changed. Yeah. You know, what I mean, that's also another way to look at it, right? So. Oh, you gotta gotta feed your family. You gotta yeah. feed your family, right? Yeah, and, I'm kidding. You know. Yeah. That's that's why I work. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, very 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 cool. Actually, we didn't hear this one yet. My goodness, man! Look at it's just so decorated. Yeah. You know, yeah. even the other piece that we saw, you know, like, because, you know, Sean pointed out that everything is custom. Yeah. You know, when you think about it, right? Yeah. Uh, it is, you know, but what it was pretty cool to see is that people back then, a hundred years ago, people still want to see their names on it. <laughs> and nothing's changed. Right? That's pretty crazy, right? <laughs> nothing's changed. What was that one that said, uh, what was the name um, on it? What was Del. it? Dell. Dell. Yeah. yeah? So Del, it was obviously Del, for Dell or the Dell family. She right? wanted to see her name on it. And it's the same thing that, yeah. you know, with the musician, you know, what we built for, right? They want to see their name on it, you know? And it's just pretty cool. It's the same. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. It's amazing. I like I like the, um, between the two, I think they're, they're both great. I like the sound and the 
I think uh, so. Uh, this thing is like it's magical. Yeah. You know, and between the two, it's it's simpler, it's smaller. I think. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know. It's just this one. It's all cool though. That's pretty cool. You know. It's it's a banger, man. Yeah, you just play it. You just yeah. This one sounds good, but this one. Yeah. The power. You just feel the vibration yeah, on the body. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel it. it just it sings. It responds. Yeah. 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 And this one you gotta kind of. I mean, you can go louder and more responsive, but this one you gotta. It takes like that one, like feather touch it, like mm -hmm. it respond like a. a like a finely tuned, you know, yeah, something. <laughs> yeah, precise. Yeah, you know, it's that's crazy. That's awesome. This has been an awesome experience. Can you believe we're leaving with these two today? I know. You know, I like know, thank you. So generous. Of thank you, Sean. I mean, what, little friend. Like, what do we do to? <laughs> You are too kind. Like, you know, we got. We should at least bring him mala, malasara and something. Um, we'll bring you something. Koi donut. Koi donut. <laughs>